Excellencies, uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome uh, to you all. Um, I just talk German. Um, put your headsets on. <laughs> Herzlichen Dank, dass Sie mich hier als Umweltministerin uh, eingeladen haben. In Zeiten, in denen wirklich alles mit allem zusammenhängt, kann man wohl sagen, Energiepolitik ist auch Klimapolitik und Klimapolitik ist natürlich auch Außenpolitik und ich würde sogar noch einen Schritt weiter gehen. Klimaschutz ist Friedenspolitik. Der Klimaschutz wird ohnehin immer mehr zu einer Voraussetzung allen gesellschaftlichen Handelns und wir können die Herausforderungen, dazu gehören auch die, die geopolitischen und die sicherheitspolitischen Aspekte, die uns der Klimawandel stellt, nur gemeinsam angehen. Wir sind der festen Überzeugung, dass die Vereinten Nationen dafür genau der richtige Rahmen sind. Und das ist auch ein wichtiger Grund für die deutsche Kandidatur für den UN-Sicherheitsrat. Und natürlich wirbt auch die Umweltministerin heute dafür, dass sie uns am 8. Juni in New York dabei auch unterstützen. Meine Damen und Herren, wir befinden uns in einer grundlegenden Transformation. Unsere Mobilitätssysteme, die Städte, die industriellen Prozesse und die Landwirtschaft, die befinden sich in einem Wandel, der angetrieben wird von neuen Technologien und natürlich von der Digitalisierung. Bei der Energieversorgung hat der Abschied von Kohle, von Öl, von Gas längst begonnen. Wir haben schon But not to, now what we need to do is not simply to let this transformation happen, but we have to actively shape it. The Climate Agreement of Paris and the uh, Agenda 2030 are some of the outstanding achievements of the global community. In Paris, the international community gave, made a clear commitment to attaining a greenhouse gas neutral approach to commerce and life before the end of the century. And we need the success of the global energy transition, which is already happening and which has already made a lot of contributions. <coughs> so let me mention a few points which I think are important in this context. Firstly, coherence. We have known for years that there is a massive gap between the international climate targets or rather the path towards them, and the current greenhouse gas emission trends. We know that roughly two-thirds of global emissions come from the energy sector, and the national contributions, the NDCs, the nationally determined contributions, won't, won't, re won't be enough. And therefore, the idea is that the NDC should be regularly reviewed and tightened if necessary. Now, this will happen for the first time by 2020, and it will be vital to dovetail climate policy and energy policy better in order to formulate new national targets. If we're to do that, we need a reality check which looks at the actual market developments and the potential in the energy sector. We believe there's a great potential here which we can leverage and I don't need to tell you that the energy sector has developed so dynamically in recent years that the assumptions made in 2014 on which the first NDC round of NDCs was based is quite clearly less than our current expectations. Just think of the cost reductions in renewables. Just think of the innovations in electric mobility and electricity storage. Just think of the potential for energy efficiency, but also the uncertainties about fossil fuels, such as, for example, the development in oil prices. Following coherence, the second key point is reliability. This is true of policymakers and of genuinely long-term signals. We need the confidence of all stakeholders in this, from citizens to investors. 
Unfortunately, even Germany has a gap between its 2020 climate targets, which we haven't been able to close yet, despite all our efforts. And the reason for that is not really a lack of action in the last years, but rather a lack of action in the previous decades. As you all know, no, it takes time to change direction. So I think my task is to work as hard as I can to close this gap as far as possible and to look not just to 2020, but also to 2030 and 2050. And here, the Climate Action Plan, which we adopted in the federal government in 2016. And the core objective of this is that by 2050, as far as possible, no more greenhouse gases should be emitted. The only ex exceptions would be a few unavoidable emissions in agriculture and industry. And what that means basically for the energy sector is zero emissions by 2050. And we derive from that an interim, interim goal of at least 55% by 2030. We have broken down this target between the various sectors and stipulated how much is still allowed to be admitted in those sectors by 2030. And these sectoral goals show what tasks we actually have ahead of us. We now need both things. We need both short-term measures and long-term decisions for the future. For example, we need to invest in low-emission industrial process and we need to invest more in non-fossil propulsion. Also, we need to take, uh, retain, uh, keep attention, focus still on our climate uh, targets when we um, take investment uh, decisions which will determine the next few decades, such as new power plants, new electricity grids, or infrastructure in, board, in buildings and transport. So we want to avoid lock-in effects. Now, as we phase out fossil fuels, renewables are of key importance. Now that renewable electricity covers over a third of our total electricity demand and has uh, penetrated the market, we need to focus more on the other sectors. We need to make sure that renewable energy and particularly renewable electricity also becomes the most important source of energy in other sectors. And of course, this one part of this is, the, is more efficient energy use, where we are still far from reaching our goal. We decided to ad adopt a program of measures in the federal government and to adopt a climate action is a, a law in the course of the next few years. And this law will not only help us to reach our climate, climate targets, but it will also provide companies in Germany with investment security, uh, including companies in the energy sector. And that leads me to my third point, climate-friendly investment. 90 trillion US dollars needs to be invested in uh, renewal and expansion of infrastructure, renewal and expansion which have been up, which would have had to be undertaken in any case. And by infrastructure also mean, I mainly mean the energy, transport and building sectors. I believe we have a great opportunity to invest this money in a climate friendly and climate resilient way. And if we manage to guide these, this finance into sustainable development, then I think we'll be implementing the Paris Agreement in a, a very important aspect. The trend is already clear. More and more investors, private and uh, public sector, are decarbonizing their investments. A lot of insurance funds are now on board as well. And this really is transforming the financing of the global energy transition. And who, especially the naysayers, would have thought that would have been possible a few years ago? For many companies, Climate, uh, protecting the climate really is an element of their corporate strategy. And not just because the top management echelons suddenly have become environmental activists, but rather these are rational economic decisions. And the fact is that cl combating climate change has become a driving force for innovation and jobs. And my fourth point refers to responsible guidance, in other words, how. The climate and energy transformation of the coming decades is a massive modernization program. If we do it smartly, this will lead to further 
growth in the economy and jobs. And we will certainly uh, be boosted in this by the stimulus from international climate policy. But the road to a low carbon economy is not easy for Germany either. And therefore, we are setting up a commission for growth, structural change and jobs. And this is tasked, uh, has a historic task really, it's got to work by the end of the years and come up as a final phase-out date for coal in Germany. But of course, a date in itself is not enough. We now need to talk to the people and regions who are affected by this about their future prospects. And the real challenge is to find a path forward, which means that phasing out coal will make the coal-based regions to an, into an economic success story. And I can understand very well that people are made uncertain by such upheaval. I come from North Rhine-Westphalia, a coal mining state, and I now know what structural change means. And therefore, I know that changes which affect large parts of the population can only be undertaken together with the people affected. We need to open up ways to new technologies and structures which take account of the burden that the, the, the environment can cope with, whether it's in the city or whether it's in the country. The advantages, the benefits need to reach all people, and protecting the climate must not be a program for the elite. I therefore believe that the future lies in a cooperative climate and energy policy in which people participate. And this is not only true of national level, but also of international level. It's quite clear that Germany and the EU are committed to the Paris Agreement and to our climate targets. We will demonstrate that through specific measures for the time after 2020 and 2030. This also means that we are committed to the joint commitment by the industrial countries to mobilize an annual 100 billion US dollars from 2020. And in this context, we will be doubling our international climate financing from public funding by 2020, and we will continue to support our partner countries in the global south. In this context, let me also mention the International Climate Action Initiative of my ministry, which is providing support for a lot of projects to promote uh, low greenhouse gas and innovative energy policy. At the beginning of May, we'll be celebrating its 10th anniversary, 10 years in which we've done an awful lot, an, am an amazing lot for global, to combat global time, tribal change. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can learn a lot from each other, both in terms of technological and also in terms of societal solutions. We're working towards that in UN bodies and in the G20 and also at events like this one. So let us be bold together. Let us be bold to take advantage of the opportunities which lie in the radical transformation. On this note, I wish us all a very fruitful dialogue and thank you for your attention.